Mine's a cat. She's like four. You got everybody. Here. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order. And for those of you watching at home on G10, uh, welcome to watch the uh, Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee meeting. Um, first order of business is the approval of the agenda. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at it? Amanda sent it out, I think, earlier in the week. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Okay, next, the approval of the minutes. Uh, a couple of ways we can address this. I'd like to make a change, or recommend a change, before we uh, uh, ask for approval. And it's back on my section in the back. Uh, the lady I met wasn't at North East Creek Park. It was over in Mill Creek Green, i.e. the alligator green. That's why I warned her about the alligators and so forth. So that was... Uh, on the last page, that should be Mill Creek Green by Snowfield Creek. <clears throat> with, with that change, does anybody have a, a motion to approve uh, the minutes as amended? So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. That comes to the director's report. Michael or Susan? Um, I can go. That's fine. Um, good afternoon on this rainy day. So. Um, I wanted to recap you. We actually met back in November, so it's been over the holidays. So one thing I wanted to do was first appreciate your um, um, attendance and your input at the joint meeting that we had a few weeks ago. It was nice to see all of us there and giving the input to council and to the mayor for, you know, how to make our community caring. So thank you for, for attending that. But then also beforehand, um, before that meeting over the holiday break, I wanted to let you know Winterfest was back in the beginning of December. It seems like a long time ago, but it was a good event. We had a really nice turnout. It was a beautiful day, beautiful weather for it. The attendance was fantastic, and uh, we just couldn't have asked for a better event. The whole weekend was just really, really great. So um, it was a nice, nice event. Other than that, in the recreation side of the house, wanted to let you know that basketball, youth basketball, is underway, going really well. We are uh, several weeks into the season. We'll have several more to go. Right now, we are at 54 teams, which really is our max uh, of teams. We have 54 youth teams playing all throughout the city, so that's nice. Also coming up around the corner is our baseball registration. It is starting on February 6th and will run to the 24th, so all of the T-ballers, um, you know, softball, all of the, those things. We'll also have volleyball registration coming up in the same time frame. So we have that. And then um, the first weekend in March is pickleball. So we have pickleball tournament. That is, registration is going really well. Lots of feedback, uh, lots of people signing up. So we anticipate that number to be steady from what we had last year, about 120 plus playing well over 200 games. So uh, if you have any questions on any of that or anything else, I'll be happy to answer anything. If not, I'll turn it over to Michael. Yes. Just uh, Winterfest, I've worked the uh, entrance gate the last three years. Mm -hmm. And as far as getting people in, I think this was about as smooth as it's been. And the reason it was smooth is we didn't have the bands this year. Mm -hmm. We didn't try to stick them with the uh, stamps. Uh, stamps. Basically, had the people sign waivers to get in and so forth. And Susan, I sent you some after action comments Good. about that. They're which great, thank you. Kind of concerned. I don't know if John Carter wants to take a look at that or how you want to deal with that. But anyway, I thought the uh, getting people into the, the site went about as smooth as it can go. It did. It went very smooth. And we had some nice changes to our transportation. Something new we did this year was actually added a transit shuttle at the Commons so that you could park at the commons and ride a transit in and we had well over 300 transit transit riders which is really nice um, that was tells us that people are willing to hop on a shuttle um, you know across town just to get to downtown so that was a nice that was a nice surprise but obviously feedback from uh, mr. Wheeler and others is how we make improvements to the event and, and grow it and do good things Anything else on that or any other programs? Just the uh, arts and crafts I thought was really good. And it was easy to get in and out. So. Oh, good. I have to see Amanda there, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, At the Commons, uh, well, yeah, the arts and crafts show there. But it was, I mean, it was just very well, very professional, very neat, uh, very orderly the way people in and out. And the parking was easy and it was really good. You all deserve a lot of credit. Well, thank you. Just glad to do it. 
All right. That being said, I'll hand it over to Michael. Well, and, and I'm going to hop on the compliment train real quick. Um, Amanda really did a lot with the arts and crafts stuff, mm -hmm. so a lot she of kudos that. to her yeah. for that. And I, I got to tell you, our Winterfest event this year, if it wasn't our best event, it was awful close to it. Uh, I thought it went very well from, from the recreation side of the house. It was a good event, well attended, uh, great activities. And I know uh, if you were there and you saw Candyland, mm -hmm. when, uh, when, uh, yeah, boy, that was definitely the hit of the day. <laughs> Uh, moving on more on, on the park side of the house, just to go over some things with you that we've talked about before. Huff Drive, um, the interchange in the parkway, they are pretty much finished. There are still some things that can't be done until the spring. So, But for all intents and purposes, as you as a citizen ride by and look at it, it's, it's done. Uh, internally with the contractors, some small little punch list things we're still working out with them. Um, I will also tell you that in the landscaping world, there's a couple other things that we've been doing uh, across the street here. Uh, there's a, a gas station across, uh, across the street, and there's a parking lot that city staff uses. And we have uh, re-landscaped that in the last month, month and a half, as well as there's a, a little small uh, accounting building and then another parking lot, and our plans are to landscape that over the next couple of months moving forward. So just be aware of that. We are uh, working at, internally right now as a staff to look at some proposed plans for some landscaping to be implemented on Western Extension. Now, we're not at that point today, and I don't know quite when we'll be at that point, but we, we do have some drawings that we're working on, and hopefully one day to, to get Western landscaped. There'd be a large benefit, obviously, from the mowing side, and uh, we'll see how that goes moving forward. So be aware of that uh, as far as things to come. Uh, I hope you enjoy the Christmas decorations. We've got most of them down. If you ride around the city right now and you see some up, the reason they're up is uh, we're working with uh, Progress Energy, Duke Energy. Uh, there was some problems with the electrical boxes, so we have to leave them up so they can kind of resolve those problems. As soon as they do, we'll take them down. Um, the part of grant, you know, we talked to you about the playground at Northeast Creek. We've submitted that grant since we've last seen you. It's been put in. Um, our expectations are in early March, first week of March, that we'll hear back from uh, recreation resources and find out whether or not we'll receive the grant. Uh, I feel still very good about it. I talked with our representative last week about it. She felt good about it. So we'll see what happens and hopefully we'll have a uh, some free money to work with for a playground to be installed out at Northeast Creek Park, which would be a wonderful thing as, as you're aware. And if you're not, that playground uh, came with the park in the mid 80s <laughs> that's out there right now. So it's definitely in dire need of a change out. Um, two other things I want to talk about, and they're basically, well, they're at the same park, and that's Phillips Park. So the last time we met, we talked a little bit about Dog Park, and we identified Sturgeon City as a potential site. Well, what we've done since then is looked at another site, and we're, we're entertaining Phillips Park as a potential site for our dog park. So just be aware of that. We've, uh, we're in the very early planning stages of where we would put that. Uh, thoughts are that either, if you're familiar with Phillips Park, somewhere where the Lions Field is at, in that area, maybe behind it, maybe where it's at, in its old world, its old life, uh, but somewhere over there. But those are discussions we're having internally right now. No decisions have been made, but we are looking at Phillips as an, uh, uh, an alternative site to putting up a dog park. So be aware of that. One of the other things you're going to see, and who has Phillips on our list? I do. That you're going to notice over the next potentially even week mm -hmm. or two is we're going to install a ninja course over on that park on the near the playground and the shelter area. So you'll see some very colorful elements come out. And over the next, depending on the rain, over the next <laughs> couple of days when it dries up, You'll see a ninja course. It'll be our first one here in Jacksonville. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. And it'll be the Phillips ninja course. And uh, 
but so you know, especially you, um, or be aware that that's something we know about. Yes, it's going out there. So be aware of that as we continue to move forward. And just wanted to make you aware of it. Michael, was that uh, for a short period of time slated to go into Sturgeon City because we had a meeting there last Thursday and uh, Paula, all those colored culverts. Uh huh. She thought that was for the Ninja Force. It is. It is. But we're going to move it over move to Phillips, Phillips Park okay. and. Uh, you know, we need to get Phillips Park more of a destination park and moving the Ninja Course over there near the playground. We do have a lot of rentals of the shelter over there. The playground is actively used, so it's another amenity we can include over there and the public take advantage of it as we continue to move forward and uh, not just developing our whole park system, but specifically trying to get Phillips Park basically back on track especially since as you know we're, we can't really do a whole lot there but above the ground because of the uh, you know the state looking at the environmental things over there if you have any questions feel free to ask that's uh, my report today okay council is on report councilman thank you um, <clears throat> susan mentioned the joint meeting that we had with the all of our advisory boards and, and committees a couple of things that came out of that, um, as a matter of fact, it's uh, <coughs> they're kind of recurring that two of the priorities are of uh, um, swimming pools and um, a convention center. We're trying to address the uh, water feature with our splash pads, and we should be moving forward with it, with those. Um, with respect to the convention center, we are taking a step in that direction with the conference center that we're looking at at Sturgeon City. You now have some design suggestions or ideas with respect to that. And option A is the open air pavilion. And it says Newbury Street, but I, I believe it means uh, Old Bridge Street. Um, and that's the front elevation. And you see the, the windows at the ends, um, more of a facade and the open area, because this is the open air pavilion. And the next page is the rear elevation, which is what you'll see from Highway 17 and Marina Cafe. And at the rear of the building, that's where you have the restroom facilities. On the third page, you'll see the, um, the floor plan, and there you can see your restrooms, and you can see how that is an open area, largely. Any questions about that floor plan? So this is the convention center? No, no, I'm sorry. This is um, Jacksonville Landing. The visitor well, center. Visitor center. 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 center at Jacksonville Landing. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking that's an awfully small convention center. <laughs> Me too. I know. I, I was talking about the convention center. Went right into this when she was handing it out. But um, yeah, this is the visitor center. On the next page, you're going to see it's identified as option E, and this is the rear elevation which you would see from 17. And then there's a left elevation. That'll be the front side from Obridge Street. We have your door in the center. Now, this is the enclosed building. There's no open uh, aspect to this. So there's two options, open right. or closed. Yes. Same square footage? I think so. I don't see it identified up here. But I think it's about the same footprint. And then you see the uh, what would be in the enclosed uh, section. Any questions about that closed option? Yeah, it looks like the same footprint. It does. Because it's a 40, yeah. whole thing on the back is 45 by 50 something. Mm -hmm. and that makes that open area. So I'm guessing this part here is what, like an information counter? 
might be a kiosk, um, and there's some seating in there. Councilman William, has there been any uh, thought to putting a shower facility in the respective uh, heads in here? We have not had that discussion about a shower facility. I'm not sure if that'd be beneficial or not. This is Jacksonville Landing is what we're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. And the thought there is, you know, fishermen coming back and forth, uh, it might not, you know, the squeeze might not be worth the juice. Right. Uh, but uh, I know some fishermen may like to take a shower before they go home after falling in the New River. And yeah. And the restrooms are down there by the boat ramp. Mm -hmm. And then this, I think, is intended to be a, a really nice welcome center as well. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know if maybe down by the boat ramp might be a more. Councilman Willingham, this is on the opposite side of the boat ramp. Yeah, this is on the far end closest to the gas station. Right. Mm -hmm. so, but it's a good suggestion. And you know, it might be something to look at it. Where is this in the footprint of the landing? It's so it's at the very end of the parking lot, like closest to the store, the gas station. Okay. Mm -hmm. gas station. Right now, it's just a flat area yep. of grass. How, it's how not much, paved. How, how much? Mm, how much money? <laughs> I would say this would be close to what our bathroom facilities have cost, similar to Wooten Park, similar to the landing initially. I think, and I haven't seen the drawing councilman, so I, I, I apologize if I'm speaking out no, of place. No, no, go ahead. But I think the, the the idea of the visitor center was to share that same um, like in building as we continue to move forward uh, with whether they're public facilities or not, restroom facilities, visitor centers, the same sort of building. Matter of fact, the uh, gentleman who designed that building built it in a way that if you wanted to make it a little bigger here or a little smaller there, the integrity of the building would still look the same. So, um, I, you know, I would say that would fall somewhere in line of that. Now, I think the restrooms at Will, at uh, at Wooten Park were somewhere around um, sixty-five dollars a square foot. No, I'm being silly. No, I, I think they were about a hundred and fifty thousand dollars, give or take. I think. Uh, that would be somewhere, and don't quote me on that, but I think that's a ballpark number. I, I think also that, you know, in a lot of cases with, with facilities like this, where's the sewer at, how close is it to tie in, that's a cost that you have to look at. I think the good news is there's already sewer at the site, so uh, that would probably help. Not that I'm an engineer, I think that would probably help minimize some some costs moving forward. So between 150 and 200,000. I'm not. Don't quote me on that. We'll, we'll get not. back to you on that. Uh, it will yeah. get back to you on that. Yeah. Where it's you Where know we get back to can, me. Okay. Well, I think I think because this is you know a, an idea right now until they do some. I'm sure our our city's engineering staff will do the cost estimates as we continue to move forward. And as soon as we know that, we'll share that with. Did you do it in house? Well, yeah, the engineering department, yes. No, I thought about no. Actually doing the building, it, oh, could no. you do it in half? No. Mm -hmm. no. Kidding? Mm -hmm. No. I'm going to assume the enclosed one would be heated and cooled? Yes. Which are our restroom facilities like Wooten Park, are they heated right now? No. So that would be an added? Yes. The uh, overhang on either end of the... Uh, the building. What's that intended for? Is there an entrance there? That's to keep people. Uh, looks like almost looks like a drive through at a bank. But uh, <laughs> on the in the open air uh, one. My understanding. Yeah. The, no, the enclosed. Oh, uh, those pergolas. You talking the yeah. pergolas? Pergolas. So one yeah. of the concepts when um, this came up was we want to attract tournaments and people to come into the fishing, so that there was a platform, there was a space, and that would be I think some of what what the design is meant for. So, for example, if you're giving out awards or, you know, those sort of things, you have an area that you can, Utilize. I want to say stage, but I think that the intention there is you have a staging area for some of those. It would be a pergola, not, not covered, but right. just for shade. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, what, what is it? Okay, what, are, what is the purpose of this? Is it going to be a welcome center or what else can you use it for? You mentioned uh, like fishing tournaments or something like that or, or have we fought? 
thought that far down the road. Are you asking in for the building itself? Yeah, the, I mean, if you, is it just the welcome center or are you going to visitor center? Visitor center. Visitor well, center. you would get all kinds of information about right. things yeah. that, um, uh, special events and recurring events and, um, I'm not so sure whether it'll be um, how it'll be manned or whether it's a kiosk kind of thing. But um, this was part of the the joint agreement that we had. Um, so we won't be, I don't think we're paying for all of this. Right. It's, yeah. So if I could just add to that, you know, a part of the identity of Onslow County and the city is for tourism and to welcome people. We, you know, we have these nice gateways. I think this is a way so that people can come into the to the area. This is in the city limits, but it would obviously be in partnership with the county, is my understanding, and that they can get brochures, they can get information, they can, you know, have a place to get at where, well, where can I bring my family reunion? This is a... a you know, pick information up and kind of go from there. And if it's a kiosk, it may give directions. Sure. It could give directions. If you've ever been to the one in Moorhead, the Crystal Coast Welcome Center, it's a it's a great gateway. It's also a nice just, you know, picnic area. Um, people can stop and bring their large groups in. It, it makes for a very nice welcome welcome center, truthfully. It's on the water, so it it ties in nicely with this is what your community is all about and get some information and right. have a picnic or do what you need to and then move on. Would the uh, Chamber of Commerce be tied in to this in any way? Oh, yeah, okay. definitely. That's my understanding. Okay, and I was talking about the um, conference um, facility at Sturgeon City. They've sort of, the uh, architect has um, gone back to the drafting board and we'll be returning on the 7th of February at our next regular scheduled meeting at five o'clock. Uh, that's one of the items that we'll be uh, discussing or we'll receive a presentation on how that's come within the budget that we, um, the budget restrictions that we imposed. So um, you all are certainly invited to tune in on that. Thank you for your service. Nothing further. Okay. Uh, before we go on to the park reports, uh, anything else, Michael, should you want to bring up? Any questions? Any boundary, boy. Pardon me? Oh, I'm sorry, Homer. Sorry, just a short one. Okay. Uh, the, at our last meeting, we looked at the site plan for the Oslo Community Ministries building, and so it looks, you know, if we, since we approved that, it'll now go before council, I think, at your next meeting, right, Mr. Willingham? Yes. And that looks like uh, it's going to be just about like it was planned. Um, you've already seen some landscaping, some minor landscaping out front. And, and uh, you know, it, it should be a nice building when it's done. Great. That's it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we also were presented with the findings of the summit. And um, since, since the idea of a convention center type activity came up, uh, I mentioned that it would be good for us to know what we have before we try to get something we need. So the question is, how many places do we have in Jacksonville that will seat 200, 300, 400, 500? What do they cost? You know, I mean, we know of some places individually, but until somebody makes a, a some kind of com comprehensive list of all those things, we, we don't know what we have. We've know? had that. Yeah, so... And our discussions on this, mm -hmm. to justify it even, um, we looked at what is available now, what size um, facilities in terms of seating, and um, there was nothing that would um, seat the, the number of people that we were um, trying to accommodate at the Sturgeon City Conference Center. So I don't know exactly um, how that's been compromised, the number of seating, number of seats, but I think it's around 500. And there was nothing that competed with that here. And, and, and that may be very well true because I, I don't know of any place that, <clears throat> off the top of my head that will seat that many. I think the closest was um, um, one of the new hotels off Western Boulevard. I can't think of the, the courtyard. Right at, yeah. Marriott courtyard. Yeah. And I don't think it does 500. No, no, no. wouldn't see that many. No, no. So 
because it was important to see whether there would, um, to try to speculate on whether there would be a market for the size that we were dealing with. Because we have a lot of events that happen at the Commons, and while it will seat 500 or more, it is a gymnasium. So it doesn't have your audiovisual equipment. It doesn't have the type of atmosphere that you know is conducive for meetings, per se. So it's it's um, something that we get a lot of requests for. The county in their new building has got a, a huge room. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a dinner there, yeah. and we had hundreds of people there. Short drive away. That's it. Okay. One more now. Before we go on to the park reports, uh, Mike, uh, Susan, the Al, Al buys or any questions to ask? Uh, I'd like to comment on your landscaping there on the uh, exchange where Jacksonville Parkway starts in 17 and the actual bypass ends. Really looks good. I know that that was your people have been working there for a couple of months, haven't they? Well, we've been working with them actually. You know, we generally want to do all installation work, but uh, sometimes when the state uh, does funding, uh, they're not allowed uh, for us to do the work. They have to actually go through the process and bid it out. But what we've done is we were very uh, active in the design of what's going out, the plantings of what's going out, and have worked pretty much hand in hand along with engineering uh, with the contractor as to making sure that the, the needs are going to be met, not just for the installation, but down the road as we maintain those. But thank you, and I'll pass that on. I'm glad you mentioned that a couple of meetings ago that I looked at flames. I saw this big pile of dirt out there, and I was in search of dirt for my uh, garden. And I'm glad that uh, you mentioned that there was a use for that before I could get out there with my pickup truck. <laughs> okay, uh, park report. Uh, Bill Ross? Uh, I went out there twice, uh, Saturday, last Saturday, and about two weeks ago, or a week ago. Uh, about 10 people there Saturday. Still got the same problem, the light in the men's bathroom still doesn't work. Everything else was fine. I said there was about 10 people out there Saturday. Everybody was playing basketball and doing everything. Where everything was fine. Well, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. We're working with FMS on that. Right now there's a light sensor that is on the wall when you walk right. in. I'd, and we, after our last meeting, we worked with, we spoke with FMS about it and said, you know, what, what do you think is going on? Because really they handle that internal part, the electricity part of it. Why isn't this working? What's the problem? Blah, blah, blah. And their guess is that people are coming in and without realizing that their sensors, they're hitting the light either when they end or enter the oh, okay. fixture. So their intentions are to move it okay. to the That's ceiling. Good. And then the sensor hopefully won't be, uh, people won't make the mistake of hitting it because it's very easy walking in or out of there to tap that thing or put their hands on it. And that's that's what they think is happening. So we're, we're in the process of remedy. We hope probably we're a good process. theory. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but everything else, I mean, it's great. People are having a good time. Very neat. They're great job. Everything's fine. Thank you. Okay, Lori's not here. Uh, Homer? Uh, Branchwood looked fine. Uh, there was a, a family out using the playground part of it. Uh, Sherwood Forest, there were a couple of people with a dog throwing Frisbee, so um, both parks look, look fine. Uh, I went to Phillips Park twice. Um, once in the afternoon, I saw some uh, young men and little fellows playing soccer. And then I went by at night and saw a lot of people playing soccer under the lights. I'm assuming they rent that from us. And uh, they look like they were everywhere. So I'm not sure how much they're going to, no pun intended, how much they'll howl when we talk about putting a dog park in the back part of that building. Uh, I'm pretty sure the ninja course won't interfere with what they're doing. But uh, it, it's just something I thought of when you mentioned a dog park in the back. I'm sitting there going like, okay. It, it could probably fit back there and still keep the lights because, you know, it is a couple of lit fields and they do make it. It looked like there were about six sets of goals out there, so I'm thinking they right. probably had three uh, soccer fields, so to speak, out there. Right. Other than that, everything else was fine. Steve? Uh, went downtown about a week ago. Uh, it looks fine. It's all kind of 
dormant, so there's no color to be seen. Uh, there wasn't anything happening down on the little fishing pier. Usually there's a couple guys down there, and they weren't even there. Uh, the caboose still could use a paint job. Uh, it's got some corrosion on it. Uh, in Northeast Creek, uh, my assistant and I have been down there numerous times. Anyway, the weather's nice. The playground is packed. And the Frisbee Golf Place, they're out there no matter what the weather. Uh, and there have been quite a few people using the baseball fields, uh, even at night uh, last week. So I was surprised to see that. Uh, one of the swings, the one that's green on the bottom and yellow on the top, is missing a swing. There's only one swing, and it's been moved to the middle, which is easy fix. Uh, the big piece of equipment that's got the little bridge on it and the, the uh, helical slide and all Anyway, the top platform is rusted through, and it's got some sharp edges on it that needs to be looked at. Okay. Thank there, you. There's some graffiti on the... When you, you're standing in the playground and you're looking back at the houses, so there's a pretty good-sized oak tree, and on the back side of it, so you can't see it from the playground, there's a bunch of graffiti. Yeah. So Just the homeowners. I don't think so. <laughs> I couldn't decipher what it was. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the uh, the bollards are still down, and the <coughs> giant tires, which would probably work great on your ninja course, are, are still there in the uh, the lagoons. Right, right. Well, and, let me let me let me uh, talk real quickly about um, the caboose. Yep. Okay. So the city has received some grant money uh, recently, and actually, as of Friday, um, FMS is going to start moving forward with the bidding out and repainting of the caboose. So let me just take you through that a little bit and tell you uh, there is lead in the existing caboose that's paint. So they've had someone come out, test it. Uh, they'll have to sand it, abate it, and all of that. And then they'll have to come back and they're going to put two coats of paint on it. So I don't know if it will be painted by the next time we see each other but it is in the process of moving forward as of Friday. Cool. Are they going to get the markings correct? Uh, my understanding is that uh, everything was going to be uh, like it was before as far, and, and, and I don't want to mislead you, this is really a, you know, in the big picture, this is really a paint job. We're not going inside the caboose and doing any work to it or anything to that. It's not meant as something that where the public would go up into it or anything like that. Now the markings on it, uh, I'm sure Mr. Baker from FMS, if something's not correct with it, uh, it'll be fixed. But it, as far as I know, it's being painted as it looks today. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm sure if the markings aren't correct, we'll hear from all the railroad enthusiasts. Yeah. But thank you for bringing that up because that's, that's important. Steve, anything else? That's it. Okay. Jim Wheeler, uh, Brook Valley. Uh, I stopped by there about three weeks ago, which was back in uh, December, and there are actually people playing. Uh, when I went by there tonight, guess what? People playing? Nope, nobody was there. It was oh, pouring rain. down rain. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it looked it looked nice in the twilight. Uh, I did stop by the Northwest Rec Center, and uh, the attendant there, I think, is on some medical leave right now. Loretta is filling in for her. Uh, I've talked to her for a while. Uh, they're getting ready to wrap up the after school program. I think the kids have to be out of there by six. And they've got Zumba coming in right after that. And the only thing we noticed just walking around were there were a couple of ceiling tiles that uh, were bowed down a little bit. I don't think they're in danger of falling on anybody, but they're just cosmetic. Uh, and that's, that's two ceiling tiles over there at the rec center. Uh, that uh, basically everything else looked fine at the, at the rec center in Northwoods. Um, Bernard and uh, Benita are not here, and Joe, we need to get you assigned mm -hmm. a park. Sounds good. Uh, my recommendation, you know, first of all, uh, Michael, are there any parks that we don't have assigned right now? Uh, the Riverfront and Jacksonville Landing, if we want to consider them a park. Well, I guess you could ask that. It's Jacksonville Landing could be added to the list. It could be, and then we have a few members, um, like Steve has you know, four parks that he goes to, and, yeah. you know, there are some who took on extra ones while we had some uh, vacancies, so if anyone's... Well, Steve's the only one here right now that's got extra parks, and, you know, three of your Steve, are kind of lumped together. Yeah, they are. It's... Yeah, they are. 
they're all right next to each other. Would you want to give up Northeast Creek? Uh, nope. Nope. I didn't want to walk my dog. I think I'm going to give up the other three instead of. Would you want to do that? That's fine. Or we could. So, Lori's got a like bunch to of them, too. Uh, those three a there uh, that Steve has, that would be Kerr Street, Riverwalk, and uh, LP Limp. They're right there within 100 yards of each other. Sure. Okay. Easy day. What, what were those again? Her, the last three that Steve has. So, Steve, you'll just end up with Northeast Creek, which is probably one of our biggest parks in the city. Yeah. Uh, well, my assistant takes me out there all the time. Okay. <laughs> And then, Joe, you'll have, uh, again, Kerr Street, a River Walk, and uh, William. Perfect. Together. Do we yeah. want to consider adding the landing? We might at a future date that, uh, if we get another board member. Sure. Yeah. In the marina? Yeah, the marina. Yeah. yeah, we'll add that at a later date, too, when that gets Right, when that gets developed. Mm -hmm. And I would almost say that will fall under the Kerr Street Park, sure. Sure. LP Willingham person, whoever that is. You can for right now. Okay. Any uh, unfinished business we need to discuss? Okay, looking at the agenda, it looks like our, our next meeting is scheduled for the 27th of March, uh, two months, back in the same room. Mm -hmm. If no other business, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. We'll see you in two months.